this is the tiny house I built from the ground up. Uh, I hope you enjoy my video. Thank you. This is a steel entryway step that I welded together. I uh, left it unfinished to give it a rusted, rustic look, which is quite popular here, especially down south of us in the ski resort of Telluride. Uh, looking up is a fully flashed and sealed entry stoop with red oak tongue and groove paneling running the rest of the entry alcove. The door is insulated and aluminum with a deadbolt and an LED downlight. Here you can see the floors. Uh, they're a Traffic Master laminate, which I have been pretty impressed by. I used Type-On wood glue in the tongue and grooves, and then went back with an additional layer on top of the seams to effectively prevent any moisture from making its way into the joints or below the planks. Looking down through the kitchen towards the living room you'll see a full-size propane range and oven with uh, ample counter space. All LEDs inside of the house are on dimmer switches. The poplar trifold futon with a memory foam mattress on the right is currently in sofa position but folds into a lounge position and then into a full queen size bed for guests. I was skeptical at first but blown away by how comfortable it turned out to be. The coffee table is a custom fabricated piece I built that can be used for food and drinks and slid under the floating entertainment center when not in use. The wall mounted TV and sound bar are both included. In addition to an LED downlight on a dimmer, I inset LED strip lighting into channels around the perimeter of the seating area. This is the view looking back towards the bathroom. You can see the high CFM range hood which is vented directly outside. The wall mounted box holds the microwave which keeps it well out of the way but still easily accessible for people of all different heights. Uh, note that the window is a slider and lets plenty of breeze in when desired. The drawers are all on full extension soft closed ball bearing slides and offer plenty of storage. Here's a close up of the mitered cabinet boxes with black walnut dovetails. Uh, the countertops throughout the entire house are 16 gauge stainless steel. This is the basalt stone herringbone backsplash complemented by one inch angle aluminum. The uh, shelf here over the oven uh, provides space for spices or similar. Covering the gap between the oven and countertops are stainless steel trim strips I made custom for the space to prevent food from falling into that gap. The sink is granite with a stainless steel pull out faucet. The kitchen and bathroom electrical circuits are GFCI protected per code. The cubbies below the refrigerator here are meant for shoes and extend all the way back to the wall. Uh, the areas behind the doors here also extend all the way back to the wall. The tallest storage cubby has a closet rod and the next three have adjustable shelves. The loft is 49 square feet and fits a king mattress. The two awning windows allow plenty of breeze and airflow when needed. I always keep them cracked for proper air exchange. Here's a view looking down from the loft. I tried to keep things as open as possible to give the space a bigger feel. Mounted on the walls you can see trim covering the water lines. I wanted to keep the lines inside the building envelope to reduce any chances of potential freezing. The cover plates are all removable with trim screws for easy access. 
This is the indoor unit for the mini split AC system. I've found it to be incredibly effective. It's a low power draw system yet can cool or heat the entire building in a matter of minutes. Notice the LED temperature display in the upper right of the unit. The bathroom window seen here is also an awning window. The sink is full size. I wanted a full size as opposed to a smaller RV style sink. The cabinet is a floating vanity so you have storage underneath if needed. The toilet is a separate Villa 9215 which has gotten phenomenal reviews. I'll spare the details here but I do explain how it works on my website. This is the custom fiberglass shower with the rainfall shower head I built for the space. I wanted a custom shape to take advantage of the area to the best of my ability. Here's another view of the trim covering the water lines. As with the rest of the cabinetry, doors and drawers, the covers have been finished with three layers of waterborne polyurethane. Here's an outside view of the front of the house showing both the vent for the range hood as well as the shower exhaust fan vent. As you can see, the two loft windows are awning windows. Uh, the bathroom is closed here, but is also an awning window. This is one of the two decorative steel overhangs I built custom for the building. There is one on the front of the trailer as well. So here it is. This is the 32 foot gooseneck. This is the very first gooseneck we've done at Liberation Tiny Homes and we are so excited with how it turned out. Uh, so right off the bat, obviously the focal point here is the glass garage door. This is the first time we did a glass garage door and the first time we did a gooseneck. So there's a lot of firsts in this home, but we couldn't be happier with how it turned out. So this is the living space. Uh, this is a 32 foot gooseneck home. Uh, 24 feet on the main deck plus an 8 foot gooseneck section, so 32 feet overall, standard 8.5 feet wide and about 13.5 feet tall. The living room is behind this garage door, so the idea here is to open up this garage door, have outdoor indoor living space. There will actually be a fold down deck that comes off the front here, so the deck will fold up. It will protect this entire garage door when the home is being moved, and then some stainless steel cables that support it and the deck will fold down off the front here. So really cool feature and we can't wait to see that once it's set up. So coming around to the back of the house here, we have a mixture of three different materials or three different finishes, I guess you could say. Uh, for one, there's a lot of windows. There are 16 windows in this tiny home. Uh, and that doesn't even count for the glass garage door or two skylights. So you technically have about 19 ways for light to get into this house or 20 if you include the front door. So on the back side of the house here, we have some matte black metal going vertically in the middle of the home. We have some cedar strips in this corner, and then we have some cedar up here as well. This is Shosugiban, so this is kind of an ancient Japanese method of charring and finishing cedar. It gives it a really nice, beautiful kind of black look. It also preserves it really well, virtually maintenance-free for 75 to 100 years, essentially. So really nice way to finish it. We use that on a lot of the home. And we really like the different materials, uh, the contrasting materials and colors that this home provides on the outside and the inside. Uh, you do see a fireplace chimney here. So uh, there is a fireplace that sits in front of that glass window, which I'll show you when we go inside. And we'll come around to the back of the house here. There's a storage area in the middle of the kitchen, uh, which is accessed by that storage door there. And then there's also a storage in the back of the house and a little door to access that space as well. So if we come around to the back of the home here, get a different view. Uh, the black metal wraps around the back of the home. And then we switch over again to some cedar accents and Shosugiban on the front of the home.
So there's a little bump out onto the back here. And then this corner turns back to the cedar and wraps around the front of the house where the front door is with this beautiful design of shosugi band that cuts in the middle of the natural cedar on either side. So this is what the house looks like from the front. I have kind of a beautiful corner window here in the bathroom and then a corner window mirrored up there with windows lining the whole front of the house. So again, this is 32 feet long, eight and a half feet wide, about 13 and a half feet tall. And this is a gooseneck style trailer, which makes it easier to tow. It distributes the weight better. It also allows you to go larger than a traditional home. This brings us to the front door. Surrounded by the Shosugi Band black door with a little window there. Really modern, uh, clean design here on the front of the home. So what do you say? Let's go inside and uh, check this out. So the first thing you're gonna notice when we walk into this door is the fireplace that sits directly in front of you. So this is a really beautiful Morso wood stove from Denmark. Uh, has a storage platform underneath for wood and then the actual fireplace right above that and it sits right in front of this beautiful set of two windows and the chimney goes directly through the ceiling. So there's a ductless mini split in this home that will heat and cool the house, but this is just a supplemental option and will provide a lot of uh, nice warmth and atmosphere in this tiny house. So we come inside the door here with a bank of storage cabinets that kind of welcome you right inside the door here. So these are really tall, really deep cabinets and holds a lot of stuff. So I know one of the most difficult things about a tiny house is finding room to put everything and these cabinets definitely help with that. So there's a lot of storage inside here, some beautiful display shelves built into the corner. A uh, really cool feature here that we worked with the client to design is a fold down desk. So this comes and sits on that first wood shelf and there will be a little uh, tufted poof that sits right here. So the client can sit on that, they can work right here on this desk, have a laptop, have papers up there and work and sit right beside the fireplace while they work. And then when you're not using it anymore, you just fold this up. There's just a little magnet here on the edge that catches another magnet under the shelf that holds it up and just makes it look like almost another door when you're not in use. Down at the bottom, there's also a cat door. So there will be a litter box right behind this cabinet that you access through this door. So a nice hidden way for some uh, cat storage. Uh, so it'll be out of your way and you don't have to think about it. So if we turn to the right here and head up to the gooseneck section, this is a set of stairs, um, has drawers inside of it, and also has one at, one at butcher block on the stair treads. So that's gonna be really durable and hold up really well, and a lot of storage in these drawers as well. So we'll head up these stairs and we'll head up into the gooseneck section, which has the garage door. So again, this will be their living space. And the idea here is to have the glass garage door that they can just open this up. It opens up like any traditional garage door, just rolls up and opens up the whole way. And then they'll have this deck that folds off the front for you to use. Um, there's some bases here, some custom metal bases that are made for a table. So they will sit in front of the garage door and kind of be a desk workspace and then also convert to a dining room table as well. So they can eat right in front of the garage door. And then their sofa will be along this black wall here, which is the back side of the storage cabinets. So their sofa will come to up about here, and then they'll have some nice storage shelves and some nice closed storage with outlets built in, some charging stations, and then also room to display things on top of the cabinet there. So again, there's the ductless mini system for heating and cooling. We have the ceiling fan up here as well. And then this gives you a really nice view into the rest of the home. So we look down into the kitchen, and then the bathroom beyond that, and then the sleeping loft up top there above the bathroom. So if we look at the kitchen, it's up on this platform. So there's a removable step right here. This step is just freestanding, it slides out of the way, and there's a removable panel behind this step. So that moves out of the way and accesses this storage space the whole way under the kitchen. So this is really nice. Uh, this is an option for if you go more of an off-grid package. You have space for batteries, for solar panels, some water tanks if you want to put those under there. 
So something that a client might do in the future, it's not set up yet, but they might utilize it in the future. Otherwise, we have a galley style kitchen, almost mirrored on both sides here. Uh, these cabinets are actually taller and deeper than standard kitchen cabinets. So there's a lot of storage, a lot of counter space, really large cooktop, really large sink as well, and then some beautiful shelves on each side. Uh, especially above the sink here are some live edge black walnut shelves in front of those beautiful uh, set of three windows. Uh, if you notice, the refrigerator freezer is tucked into the corner here behind there, so nicely hidden away. And let's go check out some of the features of the kitchen. So the nice thing about this house with the gooseneck level, with this storage in the kitchen, has lots of different levels and layers of interest. Uh, we also utilized a bunch of different colors and materials and different areas that catch your eye. So no matter where you look, there's always your eyes always leading in a certain direction. And I think that helps the house feel larger uh, as well, even though it is a 32 foot house. So a nice feature on the left side, um, opposite the refrigerator freezer here is a pantry. So this is a really deep pantry with four slide out shelves. So a lot of food storage inside here. And then underneath is actually the combo washer dryer unit. So this is a great way to have a washer dryer, but that it doesn't sit exposed in the house somewhere. It's nicely hidden behind a door and you don't even know it's there. Um, there's also a really cool feature. This is a pull out island. So this whole section slides out here and you have a nice uh, countertop space, workspace, prep area. So if you're working in the kitchen, you can utilize that space when you need it. And then you can just slide it away when you're done with it. And it looks just like a cabinet drawer. And in fact, it does have a door down here. So this isn't wasted space. Uh, there's space in there for storage. Uh, this is a four burner cooktop here on this side of the kitchen and then there will be a convection kind of toaster oven that sits on this shelf right here. All right, heading into the bathroom, we just go down another step and we go into the bathroom and we see this full size tub that sits in front of us. Have the toilet on the right side here tucked into its own little corner. And then the tub is here in the opposite corner of the home. Full size soaking tub, really spacious, really deep. Um, I'm jealous of this tub and I think a lot of other people are too, but this is a beautiful tub. First time we've used one like this in a tiny house. And it sits in this really nice kind of private corner of the house. It has these corner windows here with a really nice view outside the tub and then a little niche kind of in this half wall. So kind of a really nice private area to take a bath. Uh, the tub filler here is on the right. And there's also a flexible shower head there. So essentially that's going to remove here is on a flexible hose. And then there'll be a hook up here that you can just mount that shower head up on the ceiling for when you're actually taking a shower. So if we turn around here, there's a couple other cool features in this bathroom. One is this sliding barn door here that covers a really cool little spot that was custom for this client. There's also a really nice closet right inside the door here. But if you slide this over, this is actually a little studio space. So the client records narration for audiobooks. So he just wanted a little space that he could come in, have a little desk, have some shelves and a chair, kind of sit in here, kind of be away from the noise of the rest of the home and be able to sit in there and do work when needed. So this is a nice little space. Obviously not everybody needs that. And if you don't need it, you can just have that as a closet space. Hey, a walk-in closet in a tiny house, anybody? or uh, doesn't even have to be there and then the bathroom would be even larger. So kind of here in the corner opposite the tub is this beautiful custom built vanity, which has these same wood strips as the sliding barn door. So the idea behind this was to mimic the design on the outside of the home. We have the cedar strips on the outside. We have these stained pine on the inside. And a really cool feature is when you look through these corner windows from the outside, you see the cedar strips on the outside of the home and then you look through this window and it's a seamless blend of these strips that mirror the outside of the house. So just kind of a really cool feature and a way to tie the outside and the inside together and make a nice cohesive look. So this is looking back to the rest of the house from inside the bathroom. 
kind of come into the kitchen this way. It gives you a really nice view of the kitchen and these storage cabinets. And of course the glass garage door. Oh, and one other thing. Let's take a look at the loft and a really cool staircase in the back of the house. So a lot of times the staircases go up in the middle of the home, but this is the first time we've done this where the staircase is tucked into the back of the home. Kind of nice private out of the way and back in the corner of the bathroom. So these first three steps, uh, the treads are all removable. So there's a lot of storage inside these spaces. And then you just climb up and turn this staircase and it's a really nice, comfortable way to access the loft space. Plenty of headroom, no need to duck or anything like that. And it brings you right up into the loft. And you're greeted by these beautiful windows and a skylight in the corner. Gives you a lot of natural light coming up the stairs. And then you have all these beautiful windows along the front of the house and it leads you to the garage door on the other end of the house. So here is a headboard wall. So outlets built onto either side, their bed will be right against this wall coming out this direction. So plenty of room, they're actually gonna have a California King bed up here. So plenty of space for that. And then just a nice little kind of privacy headboard wall with an amazing skylight right above it. So they'll be able to look at the stars and hear the rain if it rains at night. So really nice feature there. So if we climb up into the loft, Kind of get a view of the rest of the home here. Looking down into the kitchen and the living space. Kind of everywhere you look in this house, it's set up that the eye just leads through the house to different landing spots, different materials, textures, and finishes. So there's always something interesting to look at. And this is before the home's uh, even decorated. So actually we're gonna do another walkthrough video uh, once the home is furnished and decorated to really give you an idea of what it feels like. But until then, let us know any questions you have. We'd be happy to answer any questions about this house or help you out however we can.